Como es? And welcome to Foxtrot Visuals. I'm so happy to see you here. But I'm also so happy to be able to finally do this. Making and uploading this video, it's just a dream come true for me. So, thank you so much for clicking on it. This channel is going to be solely about digital art. I'm going to be uploading time lapses and speed arts. I'm going to be making overviews and explanations of how I made the photos that you'll see here. And I'm also going to be making tutorials mainly for Photoshop. For today's video, I'm going to be going over how I made this picture of an abandoned space shuttle. As a little context, I'm more into, you know, dystopian apocalyptic themes. I like mixing real world concepts with what could be in the future or what could have been in the past, you know, with a touch of fantasy. And so you could say my work is mainly focused on, if I can put it this way, real world surrealism. So yeah, guys, once again, I hope you get the most out of this video. And once again, thank you so much for being a part of this new channel. Why am I talking like this? Anyway, enjoy the video. Let's just appreciate how long it's taken me to select this damned space shuttle. Thank you. I know, I should have used the pencil from the beginning, but for some reason I thought that this was the fastest way of doing it, and it ended up taking me twice as long as it should have taken me, so... And by this point, I was already too far into the selection to even consider going back to the pencil, so I just went on with it, and I learned from my mistake. Then I added this photo of a forest for the background, and I fixed the top missing sky part using the content of where fill. The result wasn't as good as I expected, but I was gonna fix it later, so for now it didn't matter. Then I wanted to kind of blend in the space shuttle to the forest using a soft brush, but then I had the idea of using this island, which is where the space shuttle would be actually sitting on, on the photo. So I masked it out using the quick selection tool, and this time it worked. After some warping and repositioning of the island thingy, let's just call it a cliff, okay? Um, I had to tweak the exposure level so that it would match with the rest of the photo, and then I did the same thing with the hue and saturation. Now for this part, I'm going to be adding a solid color layer with a 0% saturation, and the color doesn't matter. And then I'm going to be changing the blending mode to color. Now this what basically allows me to do is to see the brightness levels of each individual layer in terms of black and white. So that way I can more precisely tweak the exposure of them so that I can match its brightness with the rest of the photo. I'll be making a tutorial about this on a future video, but in the meantime you can check out a video I linked down below by Pixinperfect. And now you can see that I'm doing the exact same thing, but instead of um, exposure, it's going to be showing me the saturation levels in, in terms of black and white. I'm also going to be making a tutorial about this. Now as a quick shout out, most of the brushes that I use on this photo and in general are made by a digital painter called Imat Awan. I hope I pronounced his name right. Anyway, he has an amazing YouTube channel with out of this world content. And his brushes are completely free, so you guys should definitely check him out. Now, the reason that I'm making the cliff smaller and putting it on the right is because I wanted to add something on the foreground on the left, which in the end I didn't quite like it, so I didn't make the final product. You'll see it later on the video. 
And then what I wanted to do was to make the cliff look a little bit more 3D, like it's surrounding the space shuttle front and back. So I duplicated it, I placed it behind the space shuttle and I warped it a little bit so that it didn't look exactly the same as the front part of the cliff. And then I wanted to add some distance in the photo, so I added this hazy color looking effect um, in the background. And then I noticed that the sky had some noise on it, so instead of removing the noise from the sky, I thought it would look a lot better if I added noise to the space shuttle and to the cliff instead, so that's what I did. Doing this actually makes the photo look a lot more well blended and more natural. I then wanted to fix the edges of the cliff, but of course selecting each tree individually is basically impossible, so what I did was expand the mask using the same tree brush I used before. But the problem with this was that parts of the sky of the original image were showing up, so to fix that I cloned the insides of the island to the outer parts of the island where the sky was showing up. And now the same process for the cliff sitting behind the space shuttle. And now for the space shuttle's shadows that's a tongue twister. I decreased the exposure and then I inverted the exposure layers mask so that I could paint over the space shuttle with a white brush to make the shadows. You get what I'm trying to say. Now these certainly have to be the worst shadows I've ever done in my life but good thing I fixed them later. Um, as of now for this part what I'm doing is applying the same technique to add some shadows on the island thingy so that it matches with the shadows on the space shuttle. Now this is a part that I was telling you about um, where I added this thing on the left side of the image that I didn't quite like. And this is a part where I fixed the shadows on the space shuttle so enjoy. <laughs> And now for another tongue twister, using another exposure layer, I'm going to be adding shadows on the shuttle that the shuttle is casting on itself. Now from this point on it's me just basically making shadows everywhere, on the cliff, on the forest, some other parts in the space shuttle, so just sit back and enjoy or feel free to skip through it. Now this part is useless to the photo but I left it in the video anyway because maybe you can get something out of it or learn from it so yeah enjoy. And then I wanted the cliff to kind of hug the space shuttle a little bit more, like it's growing on it, around it, over it, whatever. So I duplicated the cliff layer and I cut little strips from it from the sides to kind of place them um, around the boosters of the space shuttle. And then of course I warped it and I blended it with the rest of the cliff using a soft brush. 
and then I did the same for the rest of the um, the little arms of the cliff that are hugging the space shuttle. And of course, what makes everything look realistic? Well, shadows, so I couldn't forget about that. And now the same thing for the other side. Now for the rust or corrosion effect in the space shuttle, I just looked up images of those online and um, to blend them in better, it, de it really depends on the photo, but usually either multiply, darken or overlay work the best. And well, after finding the best blending mode, I just warped them to match the contour of the boosters. And now the sun had to shine, so I added a blank layer, I filled it with black, and I just used the lens flare render default filter from Photoshop. And to make the sun be on its own without that black background, I changed the layer's blending mode to screen. Either my tongue slips too much, or there really are too many tongue twisters in this video. <laughs> now this is the second part of me editing that part of the photo that didn't get to the final product so if you want to skip it just feel free to skip it or if you want to stay to maybe get something out of it even though it's a time lapse and you can stay or you can just listen to me talk until this ends anyway so it's really up to you guys just do whatever you want and oh okay bye and now it's time for the birds so I added a black layer with a black mask so that I can paint over it with a white brush in the form of birds like you see here And now for the clouds, I did the same thing as the birds, but instead of a black layer, I used a white layer. So there you have it. I think as of now, this is one of my favorite pictures I've done so far the blending and the use of textures and the more extensive employment of brushes like I've never done before, it kind of sets a breakthrough or a leap to what's possible to me as an artist. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, I want you to know that I am very, very grateful for you watching all the way through it. This is the first time I've done a video with this production level, so there may be some mistakes here and there. Like, for example, speaking too close to the mic, letting you guys hear myself reproducing. So, well, those are things that I'm going to fix um, as I do these videos and as I learn. So, yeah, once again, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.